might be one of the most beautiful camps I've ever had the pleasure <laughs> to stay at. <laughs> Only at this camp at 18,200 feet were we finally on our route, which is totally insane. And we were only maybe 1,000 feet below the summit when we were finally like, oh, yeah, this is it. We're definitely here. We're where we're supposed to be. You can see how narrow this ridge is that we were camped on. And it was just big enough to set up a three-man tent and a two-man tent. And this was where a lot of hard decision and human dynamic kind of came into play. And I also think that's what's, this is what makes this trip so interesting and so hard at the same time, was that Essentially, we knew from this point on, we only had enough food for two, maybe three days, and we didn't have the resources for all five of us to go to the summit, and the climbing was only getting more complicated as we went higher. And a lot of back and forth went on at this point. I think Emily knew that she was going to be staying at the camp and not climbing higher. And at one point um, early on, I was sort of talking with Mark, and they were very clear that they didn't have confidence in me climbing. They did not want me to go to the summit. And it was very hard for me to swallow that. Um, I felt really strong. I was very motivated to go to the top. I thought a lot of the, the trip was about Mark and I and our partnership. And so to be told that was very difficult, to say the least. What followed was kind of this back and forth. Eventually, we I, I was going to be on the climbing team, but something just, it just wasn't sitting right with me. And that night I went to bed. And just to give you a little bit of like what was going on while we're trying to make these decisions is that the wind on this ridge was blowing. It was gusting up to 70 miles an hour. And we are really exposed on this ridge. So it's coming under the tents. It feels like you're going to get blown away. We all had every stitch of clothing on that you could possibly, that, that we had. And we're still kind of, these shivy bivvies were still freezing. We knew we only had enough food for three days. We had very limited ropes and no idea how far it was to the summit still. So kind of all these pressures, we were, you know, almost 40 days into this expedition. Uh, we'd all probably lost like, I'd lost 10 pounds off of this frame already. Mark was like bone thin and we knew we still had, you know, two weeks to go. Um, so there was a lot of stress. And it was probably one of the hardest decisions I've ever made, but there had been this the seed of doubt placed in me from the day before. And over the night, it just grew. And I felt like our trust as a team had really been compromised. And my place in the team was to be with Emily. And I made the decision, uh, you know, at like five in the morning to not go to the summit. And Corey took my place and the three of them left right after so this is the three of those guys heading out from our high camp. So just to give you an idea of the complicated climbing that followed, we were at 18,200 feet. They climbed for eight hours that day, and they gained about 400 feet. And these are like pretty good climbers. Um, they didn't get very far. And they went up and down. That's why it was kind of like the jungles, like going up these ridges and down these ridges. And then they set up a two-man tent, and the three of them slept in that. Um, and this is just a short video about what their climbing experience was like going towards the summit. Now we're on the south side in the sun. We can see our objective. We, can, uh, we have high hopes. It's hard. It's real climbing. This is alpine climbing. <laughs> But meanwhile, Emily and I were still at high camp, and we were there for four days on this tiny little ridge, trying to just 
survive and make it through. And Emily is pretty cheerful. She was trying to cook these like scones that are supposed to be cooked on a stove on, on the top of our pot and they never cooked obviously and we ate them anyways and totally had horrible stomachs after. So in those four days, we stopped eating after the first day because we were trying to save food for the guys. We realized as we walked around the tent that the guys had taken all of the ropes. And this was totally an accident. We just, with all the conditions and everything going on, we, none of us thought it through, but we had no ropes. And it was really dangerous climbing. And if those guys didn't come back, we had no way to get down. So it was um, pretty terrifying. And at one point, I sent and I'll get into some of our communications, but our communications were so crazy that we were communicating with Emily's dad in the United States, and he would call on a satellite phone to Taylor at base camp. And at one point, I texted him, um, so, you know, we don't have any ropes, so if you could tell Taylor that, that if we have to come down, it's going to be, uh, it might take us a while. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm writing this to Emily's dad. And he writes back, and he's like, what? <laughs> it's like, yeah, um, um, but this is, a, this is a little video from Emily Hi. about base camp or high camp. This is the fourth day that we are stuck at 18,000 feet in this tent in the wind going a little stir crazy. But, this is our view. I'll show you. <clears throat> That's Tibet. That's Burma. Our base camp is... <laughs> so... Emily and I watched, she had like her phone and you could see that sort of a solar panel. We were watching like episodes of Portlandia on her phone, <laughs> <laughs> laughing hysterically. And since I've tried watching them at home and they're so not as funny, but they were really funny up there. So Mark made the decision when he was at, you know, I think the high point was about 18,800 feet. He thought it looked like the summit was still almost 1,000 feet above him, which would definitely make it the highest peak in Southeast Asia. Um, but they turned around, and it was a really tough decision, but it was definitely the right one. We were too strung out. And Emily and I had already made the decision that as soon as they were back, we were going to set up the two-man tent. The next morning early, we were going to grab one of the ropes, grab as much gear as we could, and take it down. Because we still had to set up anchors all the way down and do all these wraps in order to get back to base camp, repels. So we got up at about 5.30 in the morning, and the two of us started heading down the mountain. And the relief I felt as soon as we started walking down, it's indescribable. And I think I've thought about it a lot. I think it was the first time in over a month that we were walking on terrain and knew where we were going. <laughs> so if you can imagine that, we were like retracing our steps for the first time since we'd landed in Yangon. We were setting up anchors and wrapping down that huge north face trying to get down Finally, we walked down to camp one and we had a little stash of food and we had all this extra fuel and we got totally like crazy, like maniacal and we're like burning everything um, that was in our packs, which is sort of funny. Um, but we ate a little bit of the food and we went down to base camp. And not too long after the guys came down because, you know, all the ropes were in place and everything. And... It was like this crazy re-entry. All of a sudden, we were like sitting on dry ground. There was a, a fire. Uh, we were eating real food instead of freeze-dried food. Um, and then slowly, as we were walking out, like things from civilization started coming back at us. Like I remember the first time like sitting in a chair. All that kind of stuff hits you as you're coming down when you've been that stretched out. And this picture was kind of at the height of how hungry we were. I mean, these villages don't have anything. So we were just, we had basically two bowls of rice a day for 10 days over 130 miles of walking. 
This picture is awesome because everything sounds so grim and desperate, but really we laughed a lot. And Emily is totally smoking a cigarette and drinking rice wine out of this bottle that we were sharing with the locals because it was the first alcohol we'd had in six weeks. We hadn't had showers in a month. Emily doesn't smoke, by the way. <laughs> Neither of us, none of us do. But like smoking really helps if you're absolutely starving. Um, and we were, so that might be the only cigarette I've ever seen her have, I'm just saying that, because she doesn't smoke. Finally, we made it back to Putao, and we had showers, and we were so strung out that I literally like saw the shower and freaked out. I couldn't take a shower. I pulled out my disgusting sleeping bag and laid it on this bed with nice sheets and I slept in my sleeping bag and I didn't take a shower for like 24 hours after getting back to Putao because I just didn't know what to do. Like my clothes were kind of like part of my skin at that point and so I was afraid to kind of take them off. But um, this was post shower. Emily even put on like some makeup and we were drinking a beer. It was really surreal basically. Um, so just one more video kind of to taking us out of the mountains. <laughs> Decompressing a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, stripping down of all veneers and the most stretched out and beaten down I've ever been. So I'm going to go back to this picture that I started with because now you have a better idea of why we were like that. I'm just going to kind of end with a quote. This is a quote from Mark Twain. 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do than by the ones you did do. So throw off the bow line, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, discover. And then to add in my own words, kind of what I learned from this trip is don't let the fear of failure stop you. Fear of failure is a really powerful thing. It's paralyzing at times. But there's no courage without fear. So embrace the fear, love the suffering, take a risk, laugh at yourself a lot, and dive in and try because you'll never have an adventure without a little fear. That's it. Thanks. <laughs>